February to this year's championships. If I could ask you to raise your hand if you have a question, please. Andy, I wonder how winning Queen's has shifted your sort of expectations coming into Wimbledon now. Maybe gives you that belief that you could perhaps go a bit further in this competition, both men's, maybe dicks, maybe mixed. Um, it, it, I mean, for me, it hasn't changed really. Um, I think that's probably one of the things that I will we'll try to make sure it doesn't change over the next, you know, few years. I think a lot of that stuff kind of comes out from from other people. Um, but I'm just happy to be playing playing tennis again, really. So. You know, I would like to do well when I get on the court. I, I play to win, and I'm really competitive. But I'm not sort of saying to myself like, you know, I didn't know like four or five weeks ago if I'd even be be playing over the grass. So, you know, I shouldn't shouldn't be expecting too much. But once I step on the court, I'll be be out there trying to trying to win every match I play. Andy, um, Serena was just saying that if her knee holds up, she wouldn't mind playing mixed doubles, maybe. Have you um, made a decision yet as to whether you're going to play and any news on who you might play with if you are? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do, I do want to play. Yeah, I mean, that, and all the conversations I have my team and stuff, I do want to play. Um, we've had a number of conversations like with a few few players, and yeah, the the plan is the plan's definitely to 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 play. Um, Conditions look like they're supposed to be good for the the fortnight, which is a positive thing. And um, you know that was really, I sort of let's say got like spooked a little bit from speaking to some of the doubles guys and just asking them why they hadn't, you know, why they don't play mixed. And it was for the reason that they've had some years where they've been backed up, and you know sometimes the mixed is not um the priority to get on the court and they they get backed up a lot and it's it's not not easy and obviously i haven't played lots of tennis so um you know that was really the reason for kind of not being certain on it but with the weather looking like it's going to be pretty good um i'm i'm up for it yeah and um, the doubles has traditionally played second fiddle in some respect to the singles are you hoping that your involvement this year will raise the profile of the doubles in the championships um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think one of the things like b before, I guess like beforehand, you know, you had a lot more of the top singles players were playing, um, were playing the doubles, like when, when McEnroe was playing around that time. Um, and, you know, a lot, a lot of the top doubles teams were, you know, they, they, they were pretty well known, like, like the Woodies and stuff. Um, you know, I grew up kind of watching quite quite a bit of doubles um myself too and yeah i think when when the top singles players are involved in the doubles it does draw a little bit more attention to it and that's something that i think um you know would be a, a, a positive thing for for tennis if more guys um you know we're we're playing the doubles but here it's, it's difficult because of the format because of the best of five sets and obviously like I just said, even for me, that I'm just playing doubles here, it's even a consideration if I'm only going to play mixed as well. So, you know, I would never expect, a, you know, a top singles player to enter the doubles here because playing, um, you know, potentially 10 sets in one day is just too much. Um, and that's something that m maybe would be worth looking at if, you know, to give more value to the the doubles event and to get more of the top singles players playing is to to reduce the length of the matches a bit. Andy, you could be playing Jamie as early as the third round. When the pair of you heard the draw, what was your reaction? Um, well, I got told by I can't remember who it was. Some of the one, a couple of the journalists told me yesterday after my my practice, but. I mean, even if even if we were separated on opposite ends of the draw, people would be talking about us playing in the final. Like, you know, we've got to win matches first. Um, you know, I think we're if we get through our first round, we're due to face the six seeds you know, on the second round. So, I mean, if we play against each other, said obviously it'd be difficult in some respects. You're competing against your, you know, your brother and you know the biggest tennis event in the world but at the same time like that's 
I'd rather be on the same side of net as them, but it's cool that if we did get the opportunity that we'd be doing it like on you know the the biggest stage um in our sport as well which which would be nice but we'll see see if we get there Leading um, Andy just on Serena is she somebody that you talk to or would you talk to her as a potential partner yeah I mean I, look I've spoken to a number of a number of players about playing and you know obviously that the, the one thing with the the players that are in the singles is that they may that that's their priority and I understand that and I and I appreciate that you know if I'm going to play mixed um you know which is is the plan you obviously want to to be playing with with someone who's going to be there for the the whole event and they're 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 in it to to try to to win matches and and win the event um and I appreciate with with singles players that's not always going to be the case um but yeah I mean obviously she's she's arguably the the best the best player um ever so be, be a pretty pretty solid partner <laughs> Andy, on uh, Ash Barty, who you said you asked earlier on, and she just got the number one in the WTA rankings. I'm curious what, just about her, what made her so attractive to you as a partner and what you think of her getting to, to number one after the sort of journey she's had in her career. Yeah, I mean, she's obviously a very interesting story, I think. Um, kind of journey that she's been on last the last few years. I mean, I, I saw her playing the first time, like, ages ago, and she's just a natural, like, natural athlete great hand skills uh, moves well reads the game extremely well um she's got all the attributes to well obviously to be a good doubles player but you know also she's she's brilliant at singles too and the results this year um have, have been excellent um and yeah she, she'll continue to to get better but i, I also think that it it just shows that like not everyone is is the same. Everyone has different, you know, different paths, and you know everyone finds their way at different times and goes through different, you know, different phases in their career. And she's obviously now. My understanding is she stopped playing. She wasn't necessarily enjoying it um, much, and you know, see her around the courts and stuff now. And she seems like she's she's loving it. So, you know, maybe if she hadn't taken that that break and that time away it wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be the case so she made a decision that was right for her her happiness and that's um ultimately for everybody i think is you know is the most important thing but it's also nice to see that she's you know getting to to achieve her her potential in, in tennis hopefully she she keeps going um, what has it been like doing kind of the double specific drills and preparations and stuff that you probably haven't done much of in your career um, I I like doing all of the doubles drilling, the sets and stuff. I don't enjoy that side of things as much. Um, it's you sometimes feel like you're not hitting lots of balls, and you can be on the court sometimes for an hour and a half and not feel like you've done a whole lot. Whereas when you're doing the the actual drills, um, you know you get really intense workout. It's quite different movements to what we make in the tennis. You have to be you know, really explosive, like over just a couple of steps, um, you know, to make sure you, you, you get up to the net quick enough and, you know, the reactions are, are really quick and, and sharp and, you know, I've found some of the sessions pretty pretty tiring. Um, the the points play not so much, um, like I said, but it's been good. It's been fun for me and, you know, different to obviously what, what I've been used to. Uh, but, yeah, I've... I've liked it. It's been been good fun. Andy, um, when was the last time you played your brother in serious competition, and what was the outcome? Uh, we we played in um, we played in Canada. Uh, I can't remember how many years ago, but me and Leander Pays played Jamie and John Pierce in um, in Canada, maybe four years ago, four or five years ago. How long ago? How long ago? Yeah, so it was around then. Uh, Jamie and and John won. I can't. I think it was like four and six or something, something like that. A pretty decent match. And yeah, before then it would have been 
I can't remember really before before that it would have been a pretty long time because normally we you know when I when I have played doubles most of the time it's kind of been with him recently. Gentleman in red. You mentioned about reducing the number of sets to make the singles players play the doubles, uh, but that has been one of the grievances for the double specialist. So now that you are playing doubles, uh, how do you look at the issue? What's been a grievance? The, the uh, being uh, reduced sets, the less uh, prize money. The being my understand from from speaking to the doubles guys over the years that I don't think the doubles guys love the no ad scoring and the ten point tie breaks. Um, I think that 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 scoring system allows for more of the singles guys to play at the. Um, you know the other um, the other events on on the tour, um, but I think like best of three sets with the normal scoring. I think, well, my understanding from speaking to a lot of the doubles guys is that they they like that. Um, yeah, so I think that 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 might be something worth worth trying. That's the case at the at the other slams. I, I haven't researched and kind of looked at it to see if more singles players are playing at the Australian Open, US Open and French Open, but my gut feeling is that they they would be. Um and yeah, I think there's it's maybe something worth worth looking at. Um if the, there is a sort of uh I don't know if if the if the event needs or or wants um you know more of the singles guys to play that would be be one way of doing it. Over here, please. Just kind of following on from the, the stuff with Jamie, I mean, how much do you think, how much do you credit him in terms of competing yourself, measuring yourself against him, whether it was wrestling or the uh, tennis or, you know, whatever, over the years has helped develop you and made you the, the player that you are? Yeah, I think, I think just growing up with, with a brother of you know, fifth, literally fifteen months apart. I mean, we did we did all all sports together, all games together from when we were kids. So, you know, I guess I guess tennis wise, like in central Scotland, I mean, there's not lots of sort of top um, tennis players when we when we were growing up. So having you know Jamie to to play against and and compete against up until we were kind of fourteen, fifteen was obviously. You know, big, uh, big help. But I just think that, you know, the biggest thing for us as kind of athletes is that we didn't just play tennis. We did everything together, whether that was golf, you know, gymnastics, um, squash, table tennis. You know, swimming. We did all all sports with each other at a young age and and enjoyed doing it. And that was probably the, you know, the biggest um, the biggest thing for both of us growing up that it's allowed us to be able to like there's a lot of kind of transferable skills from sport to sport so we can go and play golf together and play at a reasonable level of golf and you know do do stuff like that which is which is good and our parents obviously for allowing us to spend most of our kind of time away from school doing that um running around after us and letting us play sports last question in the front please what is Hughes like as a bloke as a player Second question: How odd is it going to feel that it's a Grand Slam Wimbledon and you're not playing Monday, Tuesday, and having to wait till Wednesday? So, will you watch the tennis in those days off, or lock yourself away while the action's happening? Uh, I, I I haven't really hardly watched any tennis in the last last twelve months. Really, I mean, main, since since the operation I had in January, I mean, I literally didn't watch anything hardly at all. So. I mean, when you're around the event and stuff, and there's matches on the TV and things like, I wouldn't sit like from the first point of a match and watch like a best of five set match because it's it can be four hours out of the the day. Like I'm here to to do stuff. I want to be with my family and things. But you know, watch watch bits and pieces. Um, and then with uh, yeah, Pierre, he's I mean, he's very laid back, like relaxed guy. Um, Good person, um, always, you know, very polite, and he's always been really, really friendly. Um, even you know, not just this week, but but before. Um, and he he plays 
you know, a game that I would say is fairly suited to, to quick courts. Not that the, the the courts here are not not particularly fast just now. Hopefully they'll they'll speed up a bit as the event goes on. But you know he plays serve volley, um, tennis, returns well. He's a good athlete and um, yeah. Hopefully uh, hopefully we can have a, a good run, good run together. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Andy. Thanks.